Hello everybody, welcome back to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. Um, as always, this is an investment advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. Um, and if you find it useful, that's great. Um, this one comes in as a request. And if you have a request for any um, S&P 500 stock, um, a stock that's in the S&P 500 that you'd like me to analyze on the channel, just drop a note in the comment section and I will put it on my list. And when I get time, I will make a video. Um, today we're doing Ulta Beauty, which is, let's see if I can, there we go. Um, and it's a pretty interesting one. I, I, I am long this one. I bought it. Um, let's see. I think it was right around here. I think it was like November 2nd. So right that week and it's up about 80 something percent. So it's done really well. Um, the reason I bought it at this point, um, most of the stocks I bought in 2020, I bought in March during the crash. But, um, once I, it became clear to me that COVID would probably only last a couple years, um, in terms of the, the major impact um, I assumed that these earnings, which were, got killed that year would, would, would recover within a couple of years. And they actually recovered really quickly within like one year and then recovered even more than I probably would have expected. So, um, it's a little interesting. We only have data going back. It looks like they went public maybe in 2009 or maybe 2008. Um, so we don't really have like good risk. This was during the recession, but we don't have anything before it. But generally speaking, from the time they went public until COVID, they were a secular growth business. I mean, every year, this first year, it looks like earnings might have declined slightly. That's not unusual when a company first goes public. The financials are always a little goofy the first couple of years. <clears throat> so... Yeah, I would definitely have called this a secular growth business. It doesn't mean it wouldn't be economically sensitive. And um, you would also expect that maybe earnings would definitely slow during a recession normally. Maybe even go earnings growth might go negative. Um, but you wouldn't expect necessarily this gigantic decline that we saw from COVID. So that's really unusual. I am going to actually use this just as a reference, this re decline as a re reference point. But we kind of just have to use our common sense a little bit um, because we don't have full the full data that we need. And usually I really want to make sure I have that data. I made an exception in 2020 because for me it was a little bit of a no-brainer um, that it would bounce back. So I just took a chance and I thought it was cheap enough um, and it turned out that that was correct. Now it sold off quite a bit from the peak here. Let's take a look at that down at least 30%. That These usually don't capture the entire move, but we'll call it 30 to 35% up its high. <clears throat> um, and it probably looks pretty cheap. Let me see what the PE is. Yeah, PE of 15. So the market's pricing in, probably pricing in earnings growth, like negative earnings growth, at that compared to the rest of the market right now in retail. Um, so on the face, it does look pretty cheap, especially relative to the market. Um, so what I want to do is I need a, <clears throat> the hardest part here is going to be to come up with an earnings growth rate, um, that's reasonable, not too pessimistic, not too optimistic, <laughs> somewhere in the middle. Usually I start by looking at what analysts think. They're looking at 6% to 7% earnings growth over the next couple of years. <clears throat> if we just call that the long-term rate, I probably, if I had to guess, if we have a recession, these will probably be a little too optimistic in these next couple of years. But um, you never know, one. And two, they could bounce back really strong after that so that it all ends up kind of balancing out, something like that anyway. Um they grew back really strong, much stronger than um, than the trajectory. Well, a little stronger they were on 
during the trajectory that they had before. <clears throat> they were growing more than 20% if we went back and looked from like this period that they were public. But the one thing that sort of makes me want to be more conservative is before we went into COVID, they had like an 11% growth year. <clears throat> and so that was kind of my expectation. I was trying to just be conservative and say, okay, for a long time, I just assumed like a 10% growth rate. When I think when I originally bought it, that's what I did. Um, but I've recently dusted it down a little bit. One, we don't have really good like recession data to use. And two, analysts are only thinking like 7%. So I figure somewhere like 7% is like pretty, con it's probably pretty conservative, honestly. Um, but once we include that we don't know how bad, if there's a recession, we don't know how bad it's going to be for them really. Like that's a big question mark. So I think by being conservative in that regard, we can kind of take the recession into account in kind of a roundabout long-term average way, which is really what I had to do when I bought it the first time. Um, so I'm going to use a 7% earnings growth rate assumption, but... And I think that's on the conservative end, but an investor can come up with whatever they think is reasonable because there's not really, really solid historical data that where you can say, look, they're gonna be able to keep doing this for a long time. So they're not a small company anymore. I'm not sure where the market cap is. Yeah, they're 19 billion. And if you look around, you'll see Ulta beauty stores all around the country. So we should expect them not to be able to grow at these 20 25% rates going forward. So we have like a 7% growth rate. Then we look at the current valuation, which according to Fast Graphs is a 15 PE, which is a 6% earnings yield. Let me see what I have in my spreadsheet here. So I have, uh, da, 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 yeah, 6.14, almost the same, right? So, so 6.14% 6, 6 earnings growth growing at 7%. That's not, um, that's a pretty good balance if they can actually pull that off. That's kind of like a long-term, what you would, would totally expect from like a long-term US franchise. Um, I would say that's not like super duper mature, you know, They're, they still have some room to grow or some ways that they can become more efficient and things like that. So... Yeah, a 15 PE on a on a 6% uh, earnings yield seems pretty reasonable to me. And none of that seems um, like we're making any crazy assumptions. So the way that I think about that is if I, if I bought the stock for $100 or bought the business for $100, it would earn $14 or $6.14 and uh, that would grow at 7% a year. Um, so this is what you'd have the second year, third year, take that hundred dollars out to 10 years. You've almost doubled your money, but not quite. And if you put that in a Kager calculator, like $100, you start with 10 years later, you end with 190 should come out something close to a Kager of 6.67%. Um, that would be slightly better than fair like 6.5 percent is what i consider like fair midpoint of fair value um so you would be getting it a little better than fair value if you bought today just with these assumptions um i like to have this at eight percent before i buy and so that means the stock price would need to drop assuming everything else stays the same the stock price would need to drop um, let's see, about 22%. So my buy price on this one would be $303. Now I did run a recession scenario on this using their peak price from last year or this year that we're current. Yeah, it'd be from last year because this year's not, it hasn't ended yet. So that's using um, $24 and a penny worth of earnings as the peak earnings. And then um, however far this price would have to drop. And it's basically coming out at the same. And they're almost the same number. So once we get down to around 300 bucks a share, I think it's probably a decent bet. Um, 
especially compared to the rest of the market. When I, I think it's ranked, you know, it's it's one of the cheaper stops, stocks right now in the S&P 500. So my guess is that, well, retail's been hit really hard lately. And I think it's kind of got caught up with everything else, even though it hasn't shown the level of weakness that a lot of these, re now maybe that will come, we don't really know. Um, I actually expect maybe this holds up this year. I would be, I wouldn't be surprised if next year earnings came down, honestly. Um, if we have like a slowdown or a recession or whatever. So one way you can kind of guesstimate this is I took, um, I took this year, which was pre-COVID, and I took that 11% kind of conservative-ish growth rate and I extrapolated those earnings out to this year, the end of this year, 2023. So if I did that, I got $18.44, which is quite a bit less than the 25. But when you consider we've had 20% inflation since then, then it comes out to $22.13. That's pretty close. I mean, so they were on track, um, even if we use this conservative 20, this was actually 2019 number, it, they were on track to earn like 22 bucks anyway. So I don't see this as like a super boom for that. I mean, it kind of looks like it when you look, but you just have to remember that they're coming off this crazy bottom. So I don't really think that they had like the sort of boom that um, that a different retailer would, I don't know what one, maybe I'll, I'll look at Target. This might not be a good example, but yeah, actually it's a great example. So Target has like 40% growth when Ulta was like, had negative earnings growth that year. And then another 40, so Target grew earnings 100% in two years, all based on COVID. One of those years Ulta got hurt, so they didn't have the same kind of boom that Target did. And then after it was over, Target gets completely whacked and they're basically right back down to the level that they were before. I mean, that was pretty predictable. I don't know if anybody's asked me for Target, so I might be jumping the gun here a little bit. But it's a good example to say, look, Ulta is not the same as Target um, pattern-wise because if you just took this and extrapolated it out you're, and you add 20% inflation for all that stimulus money that's still in the economy and it's not going away, um, you're coming in a little bit lower than probably a little bit lower than this 27. I don't know. I don't know what another 11%. But yeah, you have like $23 next year instead of 27. I mean, so <clears throat> I don't think unless there is unless a real recession and not just a bust coming off the boom really hurts Ulta that it's in quite as much danger as a lot of these other retailers that had the big boom um, were, if that makes sense. So, I mean, that's basically it. You have to just kind of make some common sense assumptions and um, you know, I, I keep my position, initial position sizes small at like 1%. So that allows me when I have something where I have to kind of just make some reasonable assumptions, I place my bet and see what happens. And this was one where it worked well for me. I still hold it, it never got really expensive. Um, I think at peak here, it was like 22 earnings grown 34%, you know? So it never got expensive. I'll probably be holding this stock for, for a long, long time. Um, even if they just grow at like 7% and keep growing, I expect they'll probably do a little better than that long term, but um, I think it's okay. So watch that 300-ish dollar part point where are we at here. So down another 20%. I think it looks attractive for new money. Um, if anybody else has any requests, put them in the comments and uh, I will make a video and share my thoughts on the stock. Um, if you uh, are interested in my premium service, there's a link down in the description. Um, if you join Patreon, you get a big discount on that. If you don't want to, you just click the link. It'll take you right there with all the information over on Seeking Alpha. Uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys later.